You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. Hell yeah. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. The look on Prince Amukamara's face is that this is a freaking disgrace. Hazing. The practice of rituals and other activities involving harassment, abuse, or humiliation used as a way of initiating a person into a group. Hazing is seen in many different types of social groups, including gangs, sport teams, schools, military units, and fraternities and sororities. Recently, an incident involving hazing occurred in the NFL. Incognito, shown on the left, was guilty of hazing which had turned into harassment towards fellow teammate Martin, shown on the right. This is one of the phone messages Incognito left for Martin. Hey, what's up? You half nigger piece of shit. I saw you on Twitter. You've been training 10 weeks. I want to come in your fucking mouth. I'm going to slap your fucking mouth. I'm going to slap your real mother across the, the face. <laughs> Fuck you. You're still a rookie. I'll kill you. The social effects of hazing in professional sports can be detrimental. A common occurrence, it begins as early as high school level sports. Studies have shown that about 80% of college athletes had been a victim or perpetrator of hazing. Though most incidents go unreported because it is deemed as playful initiation or acceptance to a team, pressuring the athlete to willingly accept his role as the victim, despite social implications it may have on the athlete and the team as a whole. Though hazing may be socially understood as a way to bring about team bonding and respect, hazing can be dangerous, which can lead to self-esteem loss, broken friendships, lack of team unity, and in worst case scenarios can cause psychological issues such as depression, anxiety, and alcohol and drug abuse. Uh, we're just going to kind of uh, weather the storm and uh, uh, that's it. But it's his allegedly racist rants against Martin that the NFL and the Miami Dolphins are now investigating. The Florida Sun Sentinel reports this morning that coaches had asked the six foot three, 320 pound, 30 year old to toughen up his 300-pound teammate when Martin skipped an off-season practice session. Incognito reportedly took it too far, leaving a racist and expletive-filled message on Martin's voicemail, even threatening to kill him. The lineman ducked reporters' questions on Tuesday. You know, there, there's an allegation that you left these voicemails on Jonathan Martin's uh, voicemail. What do you have to say about those? You know, no comment right now. Uh, we're just going to kind of uh, weather the storm and... Uh uh, that's it. Also on Tuesday, Incognito was seen inspecting a newly delivered Ferrari outside his home. Martin has since left the team, citing emotional reasons and has accused the Dolphins of fostering an unsafe working environment. Hazing in high school is common and widespread, and college studies across the U.S. have reported that 50 to 80 percent of students in group institutions have been subject to hazing. As seen in these articles, hazing can quickly escalate to harassment, even death. 
acceptable language. And if it was acceptable language, Richie Incognito, did you use it last year with, Jay, with Jason Taylor? Did you dare to call Jason Taylor half N-word? I guarantee you not, because you know your teeth would be in my head. It wasn't the fact that Richie Incognito said it, because he's Neanderthal. Trust me, I've been around him. He's dog, dog, dog. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys. I had a problem with the leadership in there allowing a white man to walk around the locker room and call, call black men yeah, that's and, a problem. And to call and to call Jonathan Martin a half. Dude, yeah. Well, that's what I had to ask. I was like, you know, I know the, the, the black guys when they're young, and I'm not generational. I'm not being Man, derogatory. It's, it's, it's generation. It'd have been a but if you were a black dude and you're allowing this white dude to say this in the locker room, somebody got to be able to say, "Time out, hey, whoa, dude, dude. Somebody got this, well, this is the well, wrong place you for you to do that. If you were you can't in that locker room and you heard him do that, say First that. Of all, what would you have done? It'd have been a line around the corner, line up like it's my turn. Let me get a kick in. Let me choke his ass out. <laughs> and it would have started probably with Orlando Brown. Then Jonathan would have got some in. I would have been on top. He would have he would have got his ass kicked. He would have never played another another down for that team. He got his ass kicked. He he he's, he's, he's a he's a jackass. So let's yeah. just be honest. I've played against him a thousand times. He's he, I mean, and he's not even that good enough. So You're not good enough to be a jerk. Although most were in support of Martin's case, some thought he was overreacting to the harassment. Amazing. It's part of every professional sports team. Did it go too far? No, oh, I, I don't feel like that. I, I don't feel like that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure if anybody felt that way, they would have said something. If they felt like it was going far, but I feel like it was normal days. Like, people doing what they do on a, on a daily basis, man, you know? Uh, People have bad days, you know, maybe it was a bad day, I just wasn't feeling it. I, I really don't know, but uh, I don't feel like it was anything out of the ordinary. I don't feel like anybody was being bullied, hazed, none of that. I feel like we were doing things that football teams do. If you have a problem with, with somebody, a legitimate problem with somebody, you should say, hey, I have a problem with this, and stand up and be a man. Martin described that he realized this type of hazing or bullying was not common for rookies in the NFL atmosphere. He explained that he is not against rookie hazing by means of little pranks, such as giving haircuts, but he feels there is no place for personal attacks. Seeing that nothing had been changing into Martin's second year, he explains how he felt the need to leave the team to protect his own personal sanity and mental health, believing there was something wrong with himself to provoke Incognito to bully him. Then Incognito gave his side of the story. Decided we were going to pull a prank on Jonathan. We've done this prank many times before. Jonathan's been on, in on this prank when we've done it to other offensive linemen. And basically the prank is we had 12, 13 offensive linemen sitting at the offensive line table. We have our special table in the lunchroom we eat at every day. And there was one seat open at the end of the table. And I told the guys, listen, when J-Mart sits down, we're all going to grab our trays, we're going to go put them away, and we're going to leave them there sitting by himself. And uh, like I said, we've done this many times before. So uh, John comes, he sits down, we all get up, we grab our trays, we're, we're, we're taking off, we're all laughing and carrying on, and uh, John grabs his plate of food, chucks it on the floor, runs in the locker room, grabs his keys, I've never, and he's I've never gone. shied away about talking about my past. I've been, uh, I've been a cancer in locker rooms in my past. I have been uh, selfish. I have been, um, I haven't been a good When team. I see that voicemail, when I see those words come up across the screen, uh, I'm embarrassed by it. I'm embarrassed by my actions. Because of all this, you've become the face of bullying in America. Somebody thinks of a bully, they think of Richie Incognito. This isn't an issue about bullying. This is an issue of mine and John's relationship where I may, I, I've, I've taken stuff too far and I didn't know I the whole thing. I've been sitting there saying that's not even close. It sounds terrible. It sounds, when, when it's on the screen, it sounds like I'm a racist pig. It sounds like I'm a meathead. It sounds a lot of things that it's not. And I wanted to clear the air just right. by saying no I'm question. a good person. And if you, go, if you go by just all the knucklehead stuff that I've pulled in the past, done in the past, you're sitting in your home and you're thinking, this guy's a loose cannon. This guy's a terrible person. This guy's a racist. If Jonathan Martin was sitting right here next to you, what would you say to him? Uh, I think... Honestly, I, I think I give him a big hug right now because we've been through so much and I'd just be like, dude, what's going on? Why didn't you come to me? If he were to say, listen, you took it way too far. You hurt me. I, you know, I would, I would just apologize and explain to him exactly what I explained to you. And I apologize to his family that they, 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 they took it as, as malicious, but um, 
I never, I never, I never meant it that way. Though Incognito seems to be a good guy, this doesn't mask the fact that he harassed and ultimately caused his teammate to leave the team. Hazing can be taken lightly, but sometimes it gets translated into harassment, causing profound effects. The word hazing doesn't do any justice to what has gone on now. It's more of um, sexual abuse, uh, harassment, assault, um, physical and, and mental. We only know how many kids die. We know that f for the last 40 years, at least, at least one child has died each year because of hazing. And last year, four kids died because of hazing. And I personally think many, many more kids die because of hazing. It just goes under alcohol or intoxication or overdose. Come on, you can do it. What are you talking? No. Come on, you want to be on the team, don't you? No, not that bad. The solution to positive group bonding in any social group is to eliminate any form of hazing. Pete Curl, coach of the spending Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks, implements this rule in his locker room. Instead of using hazing for team bonding, maybe the real solution is to avoid hazing as modeled by Curl's Super Bowl championship team. You know, team that's had a, a, an incident with hazing or, or you have a, a, do you have a theory on that? Well, yeah, we don't have, we don't allow hazing here. And we've, that's been, you know, just the way I've just posted it from the start. Um, didn't feel like there was any, any place for it.